What's up, winners? Welcome back to the Stay Winning Podcast, episode number 36. I'm here with my guest, Delbert Fredejas. We met on X. He's a crypto investor, just an investor overall. And today we're going to talk about his book, Fishing for Investments. Before we proceed, please help us reach the top 20 by liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing this episode wherever you're watching. And if you can safely do so, I appreciate the support. We're currently number 26 in the world. So, Number 20, that's our goal for this year. It really means a lot. So again, just hit the like button and share this episode with a friend. Delbert Fredejas, welcome to Stay Winning Podcast. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I believe we met on X. Yes. And now I'm meeting you in person. And you're also an Orange County local. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I'm in Anaheim. Awesome. How long have you been in Orange County? Almost 30 years now. Yeah, so yeah. you're liking it? Per- loving it. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, when people be like, well, you're in California, I'm like, wait, no, I'm in Orange County. Like, <laughs> no. this, is, this is different from the rest of the state. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we're not a little bubble over here. Yeah, so uh, I believe we have some of the best beaches, some of the best streets, some of the cleanest streets, in, you know, compared to the rest of the state. But, you know, if you want to go to a big city, right, downtown LA, downtown San Diego, or just a simple hour away. So yeah. it's a very great spot to be. So Delbert, thank you for, for coming to the podcast. Um, uh, I want to go ahead and talk about your book. So you wrote a book yeah. called Fishing for Investments. Yes. Uh, and when I was looking at the book, thank you for allowing me to have a sneak peek. Thank you for allowing my audience to have a sneak peek. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you really go back to the basics when it comes to just financial literacy and investing. Yes. And I think the thing I appreciate about that is I always have to also remind myself to go back to basics when it comes to making content, right? Because I'm like, I would think people already know that a lot of times because I know it. But everyone is in a different step on their financial journey. And I, I need to make sure a lot of times I'm not forgetting anyone, I'm covering the whole spectrum, right? And I don't think there's anyone else doing what I'm doing, which is talking about real estate talking about personal finance, talking about small business, for those who want to be entrepreneurs, and now talking about Web3, crypto, and blockchain technology. Yes. Um, I really don't think there's anyone else out there that is doing it the way I'm doing it. Not to toot my horn, like I just, I want to cover the whole umbrella. Definitely. Right, and a lot of people, they don't like to mix the two, right? They hear crypto and they hear personal finance, but I'm like, no, the future is eventually two in one. And we're seeing that with XRP right now. Um, For those that make wire transfers, maybe you make wire transfers uh, internationally, they ask for a slip code, right? You pay like $35 in the wire. But XRP has that technology now where it's a lot faster, a lot safer, and a lot cheaper. And a lot of these banks are adopting this technology. So it's inevitable. So I'm ahead of the game, or I like to think that I'm ahead of the game where I can speak about crypto as well and how it ties into our personal finances, right? So, uh, I like that you wrote this book because it goes back to basics. I like the metaphor, I like the story. It makes it your own personal story, yeah. which I think when it comes to being a book author, a lot of people like that. Um, and don't get me wrong, I haven't read many books in my life. So, <laughs> yours is definitely one of the few that I've read. Nice. So, yeah, again, it's an honor that you, you share this with me. So, the book, Winners, is called Fishing for Investments. And again, like this video, show Delbert some support. And um, if he wants me to share anything, we'll go ahead and link it down below. Um, so, Fishing for Investments is an introduction to investing, an introduction to Bitcoin, and an introduction to Cardano. Yes. And this is why I feel you're a great guest on this podcast, because you also cover the whole spectrum. Yes. Um, and I believe in this book we talk about what assets are, what type of income streams there are, correct? Yes. So let's begin with how, how you how you came upon this. I know it's a metaphor, you you, you went out fishing. Um, I like fishing as well. Um, <laughs> recently I was in uh, Idaho. Oh wow. Uh, I couldn't tell you the city, but it was probably like two or three hours north uh, of, of Boise. Uh, and it reminded me of Big Bear, in case you've been out there out here. Yeah, definitely. And I had the whole lake, just me and my brother, we had the whole lake to ourselves. And I don't know if we were catching bass or salmon. Mm-hmm. Not really sure, but it was really fun. It was very relaxing. Yes. 
So your book reminded me of that. Uh, and, and, and it reminded me also of childhood because my brother and I would do that a lot. Like we enjoyed doing that together. Mm -hmm. So when I went out there to visit him and I hadn't seen him in years, it was nice to do something that we would do as kids. But tell me your story about your childhood and fishing and, and your experience with fishing before we jump into the personal finance aspect because we're going to tie it into the metaphor, right? Definitely. Um, <clears throat> well, growing up, my uncle, he was the one that, um, I talk about it in the book, he's the one that uh, taught me how to fish. Um, I mean, we would go out, there's this, I'm not sure, San Diego Mountains, it's uh, Benelli Park. Yeah. Um, that's when I, that's when I started fishing. I mean, I didn't really know what I was doing, you know. I, yeah. I was young, I was probably about like seven or eight around then. Um, but just being out there, you know, that first time you catch a fish or like get a bite, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's pretty cool, but, um, just being out there and outdoors, like I, I go fishing every year in the Sierras now, um, just to catch some trout. Mm -hmm. You know, just being outdoors is is, is um, probably the best thing, because living the grind during the week inside concrete buildings, you know, <laughs> it's um, definitely a lot different. Touching grass is uh, yeah, you know, touching grass is a web three calls it right. Yeah. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, it just feels right to be outdoors, doesn't it? Oh yeah. It feels yeah. like this is the way God intended it to be. <laughs> oh yeah. And I think that's what I, I, it just, it's like, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. We're not supposed to be in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> With the rat race, right? Yes. And which you also mentioned in your book. Yes. Um, before we proceed though deeper into the book, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, I know you're a crypto investor, yeah. Web3 investor. Uh, you're an AMT on your nine to five, yes. uh, but tell us, tell tell the audience a little bit more about yourself, please. Yeah. Um, well, I grew up here in Southern California. Um, you know, I uh, work at a hospital. Um, I work throughout COVID. Um, I'm an EMT, so a lot of my. Uh, time is spent inside of a building. Um, I've been doing that for quite a while. Um, <clears throat> just started getting into investing, um, like really heavy into investing, or the, like probably during COVID. That's when I started learning a lot more and investing a lot more. Yeah. Because I mean, I didn't know what I was doing um, before that. Um, but like in the book, I talk about that, um, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad from Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah. Um, that kind of sparked my interest. So I always knew that, like, I don't know, I wanted to become an investor or wanted okay. to invest, but I didn't really know how. <laughs> so did you come across this book while everything was locked down, or did you already know about this book beforehand? Um, Robert Kiyosaki's book I read 20 years ago. Wow. So, I mean, that was the first actual... Um, financial literacy that I got um, just because I mean it's not those type of things aren't taught in schools yeah um, and I started just learning tried businesses you know um, I mean it, it really is all self-taught <laughs> yeah um, things like reading like Napoleon Hill um, think and grow rich um, I mean I, when COVID happened, I was like, all right, if I'm going to work, um, I got to be productive somehow, <laughs> you know? So I, I really took a deep dive into learning how to invest or at least teaching myself. I'm glad you took advantage uh, of that time. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, will want to do that over. <laughs> um, so I know a lot of people that went back to school online did a lot of cardio independently and, and came back more knowledgeable uh, and in better shape uh, you know, to their everyday lives. So I'm glad you were productive of it. Um, I think that's very exciting because it has, it's one of the steps that's led you to this moment. Yes. Right. So when we go back into, into your book here, Fishing for Investments, 
Uh, I think that stood out to me is, is, the quote, is, is this quote, and you can tell me who it's from, because I know you know. Give a man a fish, and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. Um, that quote stands out to me a lot. It always, it always reminds me of like, now that we're in the political year, right? It reminds me of politics a lot. <laughs> and now I'm hearing about these like basic universal incomes and things like that. Uh, but tell me why you included that in your book and how that applies to you in personal finance and investing. Um, so Lao Tzu is um, the guy who, the philosopher, is a Chinese philosopher that um, I guess people adopted that um, philosophy. It's basically, you know, for people, um, it's to, instead of just giving them a fish and just like, you know, feeding them for that day, you know, you, if you teach them, if you teach people how to do things, um, the whole theory is so they could do things themselves. <clears throat> um, now when it comes to like personal finance or crypto or investing, um, the whole premise of the book is, you know, if through the book I teach people how to do their research, where to look, um, they could take those skills and do the research themselves or find out what investments are good by themselves. Um, because especially in crypto, there's a, I just saw a lack of education or not, I wouldn't say lack of education, but it's out there. But, um, but it's just like information for people to read, right? Because mm -hmm. um, especially like, let's just say my sister, yeah. um, if, or like with SNEC, if I told my sister, which I did to tell her to buy a snake. Yeah, shout out to oh. snake. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I told her and, it, and she bought it or whatever, yeah. um, and I'm not her financial advisor, but I did actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you did advise. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there was, if I did do that, there would be a lack of fundamental knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. um, she wouldn't know, like, where to find snack energy or she wouldn't know why she should be investing you know because there's a whole different layer that should be addressed when it comes to like um investing that people don't know um i think that's a great point that you bring up because when people hear crypto everything that stands out are those uh those people that are rich overnight mm -hmm. right when they just caught like the right meme coin at the right time yeah, right. and then the rug pulls so you literally just have two opposite spectrums. And then what I like to do with Stay Winning Podcast as well, and what you're doing with your book and this example that you're giving me is, no, like there's actually something here, right? And and that's where I like to bring in this blockchain technology and, and this Web3. And for the way I like to simplify it, or, or my metaphor to it would be, Web3 right now is like Apple, Amazon, Starbucks, in 1991 like that's how early we are yeah right so when I see a lot of rich Gen X who were adults during that time like the, you know their 20s and 30s around that time um, I met a lot of them that were in Amazon were in Apple were in Starbucks at that time or even just in the early 90s mm -hmm. who are just living life now because of the investment they made 20 30 years ago so for anyone listening and I think you could agree with me I think that's where we are right now in Web3 and, and blockchain technology. Oh, yeah. So there are there are going to be a lot of projects that aren't going to make it. They're not going to be around 20 years from now. But that's why we, we put this stuff out there, right? Whether I do it on YouTube or a podcast and you with your book is do your own research. But some of these are going to be here 20, 30 years from now. And you're going to be glad that you made those investments. Uh, like I was talking about with XRP. Banks are using that technology now. Yeah. Um, we just got a Bitcoin ETF. That means Wall Street is taking it very seriously. What that means now is that it's not going away. <laughs> Bitcoin is here to stay, right? Gold hasn't gotten away. So compare Bitcoin ETF to the gold ETF, right? If a gold ETF has not gone away. I made a video on it. 
you know, look it up below for anyone that wants to check it out. Um, so what I'm hearing is you understand all that and you wanted to put something out there to get people to pause for a moment and be like, let's go to the basics. This is where you start. Yeah. This is what you should be looking at. Decentralization of information. Wow. I hope Bokayo is listening right now. Bokayo. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? This would be great. I think um, if we can get the Snack Fam and, and the Cardano community to push behind this, we could definitely get Bokayo uh, to have some eyes on this because yes. some of the collections that I've seen on, on Bokayo are books that are, you know, they're good books, right? From like 500 years ago, yeah. etc. cetera. Uh, and no hate on that. I love what they're doing. They're bringing. You know, for those who are new to Web3, they're bringing Barnes & Noble to the blockchain, yeah. pretty much. So, 70% of um, book readers are on Amazon mm -hmm. um, right now, currently. Okay. Um, and, and that book Amazon owns Audible, right? So, it includes yes. all that? Okay. Yes. Um, I mean, so Bookio is trying to um, take that market share, if not take over that market share, um, just because... I only say that just because right now in this current moment, um, I mean, Book Bookio is a new company. Mm -hmm. But you know, like you said, with the Bitcoin ETF or um, you know any XRP or Cardano, like if people can have the foresight to think, or like you know, just a forward thinking to um, maybe like five, ten years down the road, a lot of this stuff. Um, like you said, like Apple in the 70s or, you know, is going to be still here. Um, and that's where we're at. And and I can see the value of it, but not like a lot of the other people. Out, like I would say the people that are new to investing that don't know yet or don't know or don't understand um, Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, so th that's <clears throat> um, hopefully when... Um, when Bit Book Book IO um, emails me back, <laughs> I am able to Let's get go. published. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Because that's, <clears throat> I mean, I see the, I know the value of this book. That's why I work um, actually really hard at it. Yeah, it's very valuable. Um, just for anyone new to investing, because like a lot of the, the that for me, I started um, investing or learning about investing about twenty years ago, and I I tried to. Um, with my book, make it as simple to understand for people, and um, and with that quote, um, show them a way that they could invest for themselves. Because um, I mean, whoever reads this book in the future, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, you know, a lot of the fruits of investing don't happen overnight. I mean, snack was good, but. I mean, compound interest, all these other things um, happen, I don't know, 5, 10, 20 years down the road. Yeah. Um, the people that invested in, in Apple or IBM, 5, 10, 20 years down the road, they're actually able to see the fruits of their labor, right? Yeah. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Like people that read this book or get information or are able to invest, I mean, who knows maybe 10 20 years down the road they're gonna be thanking me <laughs> you know that that's that's what I um, hope for in the future but you know get published <clears throat> and stuff for school <laughs> no, for sure uh, um, I think it's a great in, uh, investment if Bukayo does put a um, eyes on this because this book also is a great introduction to Cardano, yes. uh, to investing. So it's a win-win. I think so. I mean, just for the whole Cardano ecosystem, not just book I own alone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's the whole power of decentralization, right? So book I own, which I know they do, stands with de decentralization. Anyone should be able to put out a book now through this technology. I like book I own because um, the whole concept of this book, or why I wrote it, or why I structured it the way it is, is once people read it, um, they can get the information, and they can give it to their friends, or they can give it to their family members, or people that are new to investing, they could just give it to them as well, or like through the Bookio app, 
or any book in general, right? Yeah. Um, so it, the passing of the information is there. Um, and that's how I saw this book when I started writing it. Like once people read it and are able to um, gain the information, they can give it to their friends. Yeah. You know, they can give it to their sister who want, wants to learn about investing too. So that, and it's just like a, it's kind of like a trickle effect. Like once you read it, get the information, give it to you, the next people. Um, at least that's how I. No, that, that's a great vision. Um, and that's why I was excited to bring you on. You want people to win. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thinking about that impact, it's not even about how many books you're selling. It's about you made an impact on someone that someone goes, you got to check your book out. Someone now thinks this is a great gift for so-and-so. Um, maybe I'll pass this gift on to my kid, right? So it's the impact that you want to make, and, and, and I totally respect it, and I like it. And I like how you introduce investing in your book as a way to escape the rat race. Yeah. So, what does that mean to you? Escaping the rat race. So I typically work five, six days a week in the rat race, and I've been doing that for since I was working. Not well, specifically in the hospital, but I've been working since I was eighteen. Seven. I remember, yeah, eighteen. So the whole monotonous of like going to work, going home, going to work, going home, going home, work. You How know, many hours are you working a day? Now, I, I work 12 hour shifts, but okay. um, I, you know, I've been working for a long time now, I feel like, you know, and, and for someone to retire, which is like, you know, typically here at 65, even around 70, <laughs> you know, yeah. you see people working till they're till, till they're that um, age, yeah. and um, you know it's it's kind of like almost disheartening. You know, um, I saw people retire um, through my hospital or even other jobs, and like you know, when you retire, that's that's the whole um, idea with the rat race. Is like when you retire. Um, you're a lot older and you aren't able to enjoy your life. You yeah. know, um, I saw people that did retire and you know, they look like they're just beat up and just like not able to enjoy their life. And, and um, I saw that I just, I know, I just did not want to be, didn't want that to be me, you know? Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I totally know what you mean. And um, I do feel bad a little bit sometimes when I see elderly people working yeah but then the other part of me is like what did you do to still be working or what did you not do yeah. right so what I have control over it and what you have control over when you're doing is <clears throat> putting out this information to help people invest to take advantage of the compound interest and compound growth yeah. take advantage of multiple streams of income to avoid that rat race and just the other day, I commuted to work, and it took me 55 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, Damn. wow, there are people that do this five days a week, yeah. twice a day, right? Back and forth. And you know, for me, it, it wasn't that bad. I, I was just surprised how long it took. I wasn't in a rush to get there, so I, I never rushed to work. It's, it's such a blessing to not rush to work. Um, I don't like that feeling of you have a rush and you know you're all yeah yeah, yeah like it's, it's not cool <clears throat> but it was amazing how I'm like well I thought it was amazing how people can do this for 40 years twice a day five days a week and then still have family to take care of yeah uh, because I, I mean I don't have kids but I personally believe you want to be the best version of yourself for your children mm -hmm. and I think that's very hard to do if you're sitting in traffic for two hours a day, probably go on a job you hate, and then still be able to put on a smile for your kid. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I find that to be very tough. Yeah. I'm sure it's done and it's done all day, every day. But, um, yeah, stay winning pocket is like, there is better out there. You can win. Yeah. That's the biggest thing, too, because it's just, it's a, it's a mentality shift, right? It's, or it's a, because a, a lot of people just don't know that kind of information as far as having 
passive income or things like that. Like, because information is out there, you know. It, it, yes. It's like, um, I I was on another podcast um, prior to this, and I, I, I yeah, actually, you know, I saw this on um, on X, mm-hmm. and it was talking. It was a post about a guy that. Um, you know, or it was something about going to school for four years at a college, and and um, you know that's so many hours of learning, um, and he did that, and he didn't want to spend four hours learning about Bitcoin. Wow. Where, it, for me, because I understand Bitcoin now, like before I didn't, you know, um, but having that information of you're a college degree that, you know, that, that, that's a lot of time, effort spent into um, something that um, possibly could help them or not. Whereas just four hours of learning about Bitcoin is not that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To, or, or just, under, I wouldn't say learning about Bitcoin, but just understanding it. Because I, I saw people like, I don't know, Michael Saylor, I saw people spending billions of dollars on this thing. I, why? For what? <laughs> yeah, know? I so that's a, what um, curiosity brought me into learning about this stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's it, yeah, information is out there for people to to. Yeah, the information is definitely out there. You're putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. So a lot of times I do get a little frustrated because I tell people, "Come on, you're on your phone like four hours a day." Yeah. Like, I mean, think about it this way, right? I saw Cody Sanchez speak about this recently. Um, You can eat fast food, you can eat processed food, and eventually it's gonna harm your body, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with what you consume on the internet, whether it's social media or whether it's the news. It can harm your your mindset. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the first step in getting rich is changing your mindset. And it could be different ways. Just believing in yourself, or believing, hey, this is in my control, or this is what I control. Um, do you, would you say you agree with that or, or disagree with that? That it starts with the mindset. I do. I mean, that's the fundamental. Like, it, it goes back to that because, like, a lot of the I don't even watch the news anymore. Actually, <laughs> you know, yeah. a lot of the stuff that is on the news. Um, I wouldn't say it's toxic, but it's just not useful information. For me. <laughs> um, yeah. I, 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 I could get the, the, the weather and all that stuff, but like for me, um, I guess it has changed my mindset. Yeah. Um, but once people, I'm, I'm, I'm here to benefit my future now. Like it, 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 it the whole, I talk about the paradigm shift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's get into world. that. Um, let's get into the paradigm shift. So basically it's, it's, um, you know, growing up, we were taught or not taught, but we were, um, this, the assumption was to just work and then pay, that's how you pay for expenses, earn money, earn a living and pay for expenses. And that's how you get in the rat phase, right? Okay. I'm glad you started with that. So, and I, I posted this on X recently, or on Instagram actually. So yes, most people start off believing you put in your time for something. So you use your time to earn money, mm-hmm. and that is how you earn money to go do what you want. Yes. But a lot of times, especially now, it's only enough to pay your bills. Barely. <laughs> Right? Yeah. It's tough out there. I completely understand. Yeah. Um, and I like how you do mention that in your book, and you transition into assets and, and, and other streams of income. Mm-hmm. Right? So just to go back real quick to the, to the retirement thing, and if anyone takes anything from this podcast here is that retirement is not an age. It's, um, it's a number, and that number is your bank account. Right, or your net worth. It's not necessarily an age. And, and what I mean by that. So if I bought my first property at the age of 24, even if I don't do anything else for the rest of my life, even if my income doesn't increase for the rest of my life, and just do the regular 30-year loan, 
right? That means at 54, I no longer have what is the biggest expense for people, which is housing, whether it's a mortgage or whether it's rent. That's usually someone's biggest monthly expense. With that said, I could technically retire at 54 in just that scenario, right? So that's why I go back to the older people and I'm like, what did you do, what didn't you do? Especially when everything was just so much cheaper back then. I mean, just in the last four years alone, we have properties going up over 30%, even up to 50% in some markets, yeah. you know? Um, so break down the paradigm shift for me a little more, and then we'll transition into the streams of income that you talk about in your book to achieve financial independence and retire early. Uh, well, like you said, or like I said earlier, like just it's it's basically <clears throat> going from you know earning a wage and paying for things to earning a <clears throat> wage and paying for assets, well, earning a wage and paying for investments. That way, those investments either passively or actively can pay for things instead of you because with a wage you're limited by the number of hours in a day and there's only 24 if you work 24 hours a day yeah so you're kind of limited in that aspect you, there's a ceiling but there's no Correct. limit to how many assets you can buy and there's no limit to how many, how much money that those assets can earn you. Oh, there you go. Well said. Um, so that that was the shift for me, um, and that's something that you know, like once I understood that, I was like, oh man, now I gotta use all my money that I'm earning to pay for as many assets, and and, and like I mean, I'm just fortunate to. To have that shift because now I know like all right I gotta buy some real estate I gotta or not buy I gotta invest in some real estate or I gotta invest in Cardano or you know and and get income like that um, so yeah that's that once I knew that and I was like all right done this is what I'm gonna do yeah. and this is how I'm gonna do it um, <laughs> I like that that is the mindset mindset shift that is required um, where you start thinking more like a producer versus a consumer yeah right so instead of spending or wasting money you're invest you're spending and investing money instead and I think that's a tough part with a lot of people right because like you mentioned if this doesn't happen this is years in the making like I'm not gonna go buy a house right now and then tomorrow it's gonna yeah. start paying me yeah <laughs> it takes a while but that time is gonna pass regardless like no matter what the time is going to pass so you might as well just start planting those seeds now so the shade is just that much better for you down the road because the time is going to pass either way right yeah. so I'm glad you had that mindset shift uh, the goal with Steven Impacta is that people start with that mindset shift so I'm glad you mentioned that in your book it, it's awesome I'm really really liking that now when you talk about investing in real estate so let's talk about those types of income right so real estate um, you can rent it out, make income that way. That's considered long-term rental. Someone lives there for a year. And you have short-term rentals like Airbnb, uh, where people use it as, as vacation homes. Then there's fix and flips, which is what I'm doing now. Right, you buy a distressed property, you fix it up, increase its value, and then sell it on the market. Um, I mean, there's so many ways that you can make money through real estate. Now. Let's go with the other types of income. So let's go with earned income, profit income, uh, what that is and what you're doing about that, about passive income, about interest income. So let's break down those types of incomes you talk about in your book and, and, and personally, uh, what you're doing with each one. Um, I mean, earned income is basically what I'm doing at my job, you know. I mean, I, I do have a limit and we all do have a limit as far as like, the amount of hours that we can work in a day and, and, and even if you work overtime or you work an extra shift it's like you 
you're just really worn out. If you, it all depends on what job you are, right? You could be sitting, yeah. you could be sitting at the desk, being you know just worn out too. Yeah, um, I remember that. Um, just real quick. So yeah, I used to have a desk job at the bank, and they would offer overtime like crazy. So I'll take advantage. And I didn't know how worn out I was. Mm. Uh, my boss instructed me, you know, go to this room we're about to meet. <laughs> and I ended up going to a different room, sitting in a different meeting with other people. <laughs> I was there for 15 minutes. <laughs> and until they're like, it was my turn to speak because we were going around. <laughs> like, Wait, what is this about? Oh, so and so. What? My boss just told me to meet me here. At that same time, my boss is coming. He goes, I told you to go to the other room. That's how out of it I was. Yeah. That I didn't, just that small detail just turned into this whole thing where yeah. now I'm giving a presentation where I didn't even know I was going to present it. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Go back to that. <laughs> no. just, that yeah, so you just know, wanted you... to give that example about how you could be worn out even if you are sitting at a desk yeah. I mean, even if, you're, if you do work a lot, you know, because I feel like <clears throat> places like in California or even in New York or it, it the cost of living is just really expensive. People have to take <clears throat> two, three jobs, you know, sometimes just to make ends meet. Um, and it's, it, you know, especially if you have a family, it's it's tough. Um, yeah. You know, and, and that's what people are used to, right? Um, or that's what people know. Um, yeah, it's considered normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the thing that I like about investments, like and talk about interest income, is um, yeah. Let's go move on to interest income. Yeah, that that that's that's very passive. That is you that just is not doing anything and getting paid for your your the money that you invested, right? Or um, and it's funny because that's like a lot of the investments that I do especially in crypto, I look for those uh, APRs. Yeah. I have NFTs that give me a <laughs> APRs. Yes. Um, which is crazy. But it's, it's, I mean, a lot of the, that's, the way I see it is when I, like, truly, I'm like, I wouldn't say semi-retired, but I, you know, when I am retired, yeah. um, just, earning money off of APRs, off, off these passive incomes. I hopefully in, in real estate um, as well, but I, I, I still have to learn a lot more about real estate. Like right now the markets is, I mean, it's coming down a little bit more, um, but um, a lot of the passive incomes is, is just, that's how I want to work. <laughs> <laughs> passively. That's how I want to make a living, passively. Yeah, yeah. that is the goal. Um, yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up and brought up real estate. Um, you know, we can chat, off, we can chat about real estate more off camera. Um, but I think, at least for me, real estate is actually very passive. I know a lot of people on X like to say it's not passive. Mm -hmm. But the difference here is that my properties are less than 30 years old. So I'm not, and the weather here is great, right? So I'm not having the roof problems that other people are having. I'm not having the, pl the plumbing problems that other people are having. Um, so, yeah, it's very, very passive on my long-term rentals. I Same did, with my flips. I did with um, learn about reverse mortgages um, from your other podcast. Yeah, and you. that really um, intrigued me. That, like, to me, I didn't even know that things like that were possible. <laughs> you know? Right? I mean... I, so... There's a rabbit hole to this money. Thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> no. So that's what the whole thing with the book is. It's because there's a big learning curve, um, right? You you know, when you get into even just investing investing in journal or in general, like there's a lot to learn, um, especially with real estate. There's a lot that I don't know, like um, tapping into your equity to buy different properties. Um, to me, it's like what. Like, I could do that. <laughs> See, yeah. and that, that, I'm glad you brought that up. That's amazing. So before we're talking about escaping the rat race by investing in, in, in other vehicles, such as real estate, right? And how people physically, you only work a certain amount of hours a day, yeah. right? So they recommend you need eight hours of sleep, 
if you're in your twenties, you only need five, and that's why I always tell people: if you're in your twenties, just, just work, just work. Yeah. <laughs> Before you get tired, right? Because then when you're in your thirties or forties, you're like, oh, I need my coffee, I need my eight hours of sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's twenty four hours in a day, and you work eight hours a day. That's normal, right? People, uh, the, the, what's considered normal, eight hours a day. You commute one hour each way. That's ten hours. Another hour just to get ready. That's eleven hours, and then eight hours to sleep. Now you're at what, 19 hours? So you have five hours to change your life. Five hours at a time. That's not including eating, running errands, taking care of family members, mm -hmm. watching Netflix. <laughs> um, so when we take real estate, for example, and, and uh, I'm glad you brought out my previous podcast because I do want to put more of this information out there. Yeah, yeah. So you're working a certain amount of hours, you're working overtime to save money. But say you do get that other vehicle, you invested in real estate, you bought real estate. Uh, in California, at least, over the last 30 years, you have over 7% appreciation, right? So like, when you're talking about a million dollar home, like that's a lot of appreciation one, two, three years down the line. So yeah, you can easily, so you you can't work OT like that for three, <laughs> for three years back to no, back. No. Trust me, I try. <laughs> you cannot. But when you're putting your money into real estate like that, that real estate is appreciating 24 hours a day, yeah, seven days a week. Yes. Like it does not sleep, right? And in those three years, now you're like, okay, cool. I have equity here, forty thousand dollars that I could take out tax free, yes. with even lower interest rates, and invest into more real estate or, or other or buy a whole Bitcoin if you want, <laughs> you know. Um, so thank you for bringing up my previous podcast episode. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I mean, right? Like this is such a deep rabbit hole. Like it's just, there's so much to learn, but we got to start somewhere. And that's where your book starts. Fishing for investment starts back in the basics. And, and you even talk about the different ways of fishing. So let's go ahead and move on to that a little bit and, and go into more detail about those different, we just discussed one, which is the real estate, which I guess you can call it buying hold. But there's other things, right? You're investing in crypto. So, so tell us about the different ways to fish. So the book is like a, a whole metaphor, right? It's, um, <clears throat> it's teaching people how to invest, or teaching people how to fish. Um, there are different ways that people can invest. You know, real estate's one. Um, in, Earning interest is another. Um, people can get into digital assets like Bitcoin, Cardano. Um, the way I see it is like in the future, maybe five, ten years down the road, twenty years down the road. Because anyone that invests, they have to have that um, long-term thinking yeah. or long-term mindset. When I invest now, it's not a hundred dollars is a hundred dollars it's a hundred dollars is going to be worth possibly a thousand dollars um and that's kind of like my mindset as far as like when i whenever i do buy some like cordano or do buy some um bitcoin it's like it's not for now i'm not doing this now it's for later um yeah. and, and that's it's like there's especially for someone that's new to investing that whole just like learning and understanding that is kind of like why am i going to sacrifice my budget or why am i going to budget something to invest when i don't even know why or don't even see the because we live right now in a world of like instant gratification, instant right? gratification everyone yeah. wants things now um yeah, yeah. so the whole just breaking out of that mindset is like so hard because like people are accustomed to getting things right away you know they don't want to delay that gratification right even though if they do delay it it's they're gonna reap the rewards later so um, that's I mean a little bit there, there's so many different ways people can invest would you say that's the toughest part about investing I, mean, I see that a lot with yeah. the millennials and Gen Z, uh, instant gratification, right? Um, because we could get things so much easier now. 
Okay. You know, I could tap a few buttons here and food's going to be here in 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so would you say that's the toughest part when it comes to investing? Uh, what, you, what you're seeing out there? Is, is it the, the fact that people don't want to think long term or don't want to invest because it's going to take too long? Hmm. I mean, there's a lot of different things, like difficult things about investing. Um, the most difficult, yeah, I would say, because it's like, it's like jumping in, like if you don't know, if you don't invest, yeah, it's like jumping into a, a, a party where you don't know anyone. There's like so much different vocabulary, um, so many different ways, like people have their own um, <clears throat> way that they invest and it's like, yeah. Right. There, there's so many. I, that's why I felt like I literally needed to write this book, so <laughs> so so I could help people just like you educate yeah. them on on investing in general. Because um, when I learned when I started investing, it was this is like this book is like a culmination of all the years that I've learned and experiences that I've gone through, right? Yeah. Um, and it's still a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm still learning by the day too. Um, I'm glad my podcast was able to, to show you different avenues as well. Tell me a little bit about your investment. So we know you're investing in Cardano, mm -hmm. and you're investing in Bitcoin, you have a little bit of real estate that you're investing in as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, tell us about your investments. Um, we don't have to stock specific numbers, we can talk about maybe percentages. Um, and and something that you're not investing yet that you may want to invest in in your future? Um, I do have Bitcoin. That's literally how I started doing this. My friend gave it to me and um, I was very, for it was like last bull run. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, like literally that she gave me a hundred dollars and it's like, oh cool. And then literally it just went up. Like I, I was like, what? How did this even do <laughs> yeah, it? Like, cause, cause before that I was like investing in gold and like, yeah. and just I had my four hundred one k, um, and it just like over time it just went up. But like to see Bitcoin go like up really fast, like what? Is it? How did that even happen? Like, is this real? Yeah. Um. I have I have, do have Bitcoin. I, I I have a lot of Cardano. Nice. Just because I believe in the vision, um, or just the fundamentals of the coin, you know, of the of the crypto. Um, but with Cardano in its like digital economy, yeah, there's so many different other um, cryptos in it that I believe, because I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, yeah, are gonna be here for the like the long term as well. I mean, cause that's, I mean, I could say I, I had a lot of chain link. <laughs> chain link's been doing really good this year. Um, so not just Cardano, all, but all the Cardano native tokens. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. IAG, Iagon is, I have a lot. Um, just because the, the vision of it, of that company, um, I, re I have Snack, um, shout out to Goofy. <laughs> Shout out to Goofy. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, what else do I have? <laughs> I mean, just yeah, just for those that are new, Iagon, uh, it's cloud storage, right? Yes. Um, like you were mentioning, I believe that's also one that's here for the long run because mm -hmm. the world is only getting more digital. Yes. I mean, there's digital girlfriends out. <laughs> like, there's AI girlfriends out. Like, I did see so that. So that's how much, that's <laughs> how, you know, like, we're going digital. Like it's inevitable. So you're gonna need a place to store this information. Yeah. And again, like I mentioned, blockchain just has this technology that cannot be ignored. What do you so think I do about- think they are, they are here for the long run. Yeah. No, I'm just curious, like, cause I can understand Iagon's concept. Yeah. Um, and it being a cloud storage company, where do you, what do you think about um, Iagon? I'm just curious now. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little bit like that. It's. Um, it's a service that's eventually just going to be required. Like you can't even be anywhere in the digital footprint, whether it's social media or just your website, without having a need 
to store this information. So that's why I believe it's here to stay for the long run. Right? So when I was talking about those investments in the 90s, and you know, later in the 90s, I like the dot com bubble, and like half of these companies don't even exist anymore, right? But the right ones do, and those right ones made people so many millions. Uh, Iogon, uh, or just a lot of these within the Cardano, I think will be here for a long time. Yeah. Uh, because they're providing real world solutions. So Ion is providing that world mobile token. It's bringing cell services to parts of the world that people didn't even know existed. Yeah. Um, Snack is bridging web two and web three with this energy drink right here. So shout out to Snack fam. Uh, let's see what else do we have. I do like the Noon project on Cardano. What's that? Uh, it's like Spotify, but on the blockchain. Oh, okay. I so when you talk about you know, royalties and, and how these artists get paid. See, before, you had to go to record labels, you had to go to these big film distributors to just put this information out there. But now you have YouTube. I can put my movie on YouTube. Like, I don't have to go to these distributors, right? I can use DistroKid to distribute music. Like, I don't have to go to like all these record labels anymore, yeah. right? So that's where decentralization comes in, and you have new or you could just go and upload your music there as an artist um, and get the royalties that you deserve by like, instead of having to get the record label or cut the manager or cut so and so and so and so. I was reading um, Snoop Dogg was um, complaining on the internet somewhere about how <coughs> Spotify wasn't paying the artists properly. And I mean, before streaming services, um, People got the art. The musicians would get paid from the record label, and they, you know, they knew. But with Spotify, SoundCloud, like it, it's not clear cut. And they, I mean, they went from making like millions of dollars to like whatever they make from Spotify, which is like with the blockchain technology. I think that's um, great for musicians, just yeah. because you know it's like literally. A lot the royal. I, I don't. I'm not too sure about the structure for the royalties and stuff like that. But I think it'll be better for them too. Yeah, I think, uh, and I preach about that a lot. Web three just levels up the playing field so much with the, uh, with everybody. Now, before we wrap this up, Dilbert, what is one thing you want people to walk away with from your book? And um, what do you see next happening as far as publishing goes? Ooh. I mean, ideally this book is is to help people to gain the information so they can start investing for themselves. Right? Not for when they read the book, but for their future, for their family's future. Um, because with um, a lot of these investments, they could pass it down to their kids yeah. Um, it literally sets them up for um, success, right? Um, that's a lot of, that's why I spent all these hours learning how to write a book, make a book cover, like, and be effective in the communication, right? Um, I hope <laughs> whenever I do get published or when people read the book that like you know it changed their life for the future um, yeah that is what drives me um, to do this like it almost consumed me like literally this is what I'm I'm, I'm gonna go home and then I gotta do a website and everything so that um, every like it it's effective like I, I don't want this book just to be out there and just for people to try to read it and come up on it like I want people to read this book yeah when they want to learn about investing this is the book that they want to read <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head my friend you know, it's very simple, it's very straightforward, yeah. it's very short. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not scary at all. It's something that people will enjoy. You have your own personal story there. Uh, 
fishing with your uncle, how that ties into the metaphor of teaching people how to fish, uh, which again is investing for themselves, for their long-term well-being and their family's well-being. Um, that is such a great message. Um, yeah, so for anyone that's thinking about writing a book, walk us through the steps. How do you how do you get your book out there? How do you start it? <laughs> how do you put your time in it? Let us know. Um, I mean, I didn't even know I was going to write the book. <laughs> 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 to tell you the truth, I just had it. You know, I, I I took a vacation last year, and I just started like. I mean, the specific reason why I wrote this book is because, I mean, I'm not a financial advisor, but I did tell my sister and my friend to, um, one of my friends to um, invest. Yeah. And when I did, it was like, Cardano was at $3. <laughs> <laughs> Hang um, on there, people. We'll, we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it wasn't the, the best time. And, and, so, and she's down on her investment now, but like, I, I thought to myself that it needed to be, I needed to um, be more effective or like tell her that like, or tell people, because I want to talk about crypto all, I could talk about crypto all day, but um, book and information, um, it, it's, it's like how I started learning. So that, I mean, that's, that's literally, but I didn't know how to write a book, so I had to learn. Um, shout out to my sister. She's the one that actually has been helping me edit. Um, Lorian Ferdeas, thank you. Dr. Lorian Ferdeas. <laughs> she would get mad. Um, I, I, cause yeah, she's helping me a lot. Um, there, there are editors out there um, for people to, to seek out. There, um, but even you know a lot of a lot of what I learned is on YouTube. <laughs> the decentralization <laughs> of in information. Yes, um, I'm in the control of putting stuff out there, right? You could also, I mean, I, I saw I saw Elon talk about it too. Like you could look up MIT courses on the internet now, whereas like twenty years down the road, like twenty years ago, you couldn't get this information, right? Yeah. But yeah, that, I mean, yeah, this whole writing a book process has been great. It's 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 um, it's it's been a journey. <laughs> you know what? It, it's very exciting, and, and I appreciate you sharing this journey with me and my audience here because uh, I've been asked from from my supporters, when am I coming out with a book? Yay! And you've inspired me that maybe I should get on it. <laughs> um, and, and the book I've always had it in the back of my head is how to buy your first investment property. Uh, as in like how to move out by 25 and I think that book will hit very well with my audience because I mean reading an article today how someone is the same age as me and their rent went up and they had to move out of state they had to leave Orange County and they were really sad about it and I'm like wow if I can write this book that doesn't have to be the story for everyone the story could be how you bought a house how you won you set up multiple streets of income and how you got to stay in one of the top 10 most expensive parts of the nation because of XYZ. Yeah. So thank you for your inspiration on this book. It's very, very excited. I know maybe you and me could just talk offline more to make sure we get this book out there to people. Because like you said, there's a lot of information online, right? And, and people have the choice to decide what they want to consume. Yeah. Do they want to be entertained? Do they want to be educated? So my goal with this podcast as well is to entertain you guys <laughs> because I'm very aware that education only goes so far online, um, but entertainment goes even further. Um, so I, you, you did a great way to summarize with all the information that's out there is getting all the basics, summarizing it, and saying this is where you start. This, these are the terms that you should know, and this is how to find further information. And I don't think I could have written a better book myself. So, my friend, congratulations on Fishing for Investments. Everyone, please look out for Delbert's book, Fishing for Investments. I'll link more information below. Uh, before we wrap this up, Delbert, how else do you stay winning, my friend? 
every day. It's just the mindset, man. Like, you know, I'm blessed. I'm, I mean, I took uh, I took the time to learn all this stuff, and like, only recently I was like, just started thinking, like, man, I, like, this situation <clears throat> that I'm in, I'm I can't. I can't thank God, any, you know, any more than I have. Or, you know, I'm lucky. I'm oh, lucky. That's, that's beautiful. And again, uh, you're a perfect example of how that shift in mindset uh, can change the direction and the outcome of your life. So thank you for sharing your personal story with me here today. And thank you for sharing the, that positivity. Because it does start with the mindset shift first. So you got that going. Everyone sees it. And now you have the book on how to get started to escape the rat race. Delbert, thank you so much for tuning in today. Everyone, please show support of this podcast. For more episodes like this, please hit like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to the Snack Man. Stay winning. Cut. <laughs> hey, can we take a picture? That was good.